you and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dick Smothers, and we really have a great show for you tonight. We have uh, Kate Smith, Jefferson Airplane, Mason Williams, Pat Paulson, the Ron Poindexter dancers, Jimmy Joyce singers, and of yeah. course the Nelson Nelson Riddle and his wonderful orchestra. And we, Wait a minute. as the show goes Wait, along, Dick, I'm you sure just, you're going to you, uh, you forgot about me. You didn't mention my I didn't, name. Of course, Tommy, you're on the show. I, I didn't forget about you. You can't get off that easy. You for, my brother forgot about you. Forgot well, I about assume me. I didn't forget about. Yes, you. you did. You forgot about your. My brother forgot about his own brother. I didn't I'm his brother, and you didn't mention. Well, you're standing right here. How could Boy, I... if you if you forgive me now, what's going to happen in a year from now? <laughs> huh? What's going to happen? Will you remember me then? Of course I will. You will. What about yes. a week from now, or a well, month from don't now? Don't be ridiculous. What about a week from now? Yes, I will. What? A, what a Tom. Okay, let's get on with the show. Then. Okay. 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 Hey, now, as knock, I said... knock. What? Knock, knock. Who's there? You forgot already! <laughs> It's the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour with guest stars Jefferson Airplane, Mason Williams, Pat Paulson, special guest star Kate Smith. Our Jimmy Joy singers, the Ron Poindexter dancers, and Nelson Riddle and his orchestra. Ah, such a beautiful house. And it's all ours. And the banks. We can put the sofa there, and grandfather clock here. And this is the den. Oh, thank you, sir. Take the easy chair. Um, does it come with an ashtray? Oh, here. Try this. Thanks. I'd like to try another cigarette, too. Tastes hot. I know what you mean. Pick these up today. Long size cools? Sounds promising. Come up to the cool taste. Taste extra coolness in an extra length. Say, honey, you got those cools? Right here. You like them? Uh huh. Come up to the cool taste. Try new Cool Filter Longs. The only extra length cigarette with a taste of extra coolness. Cool Filter Longs, Cool Filter Kings. Two sizes, one taste. A cool taste. From Television City in Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, meet the Smothers Brothers. Let it be, let it be, whatever in heaven you want it to be. Don't ask me if that's what it seems, that's what it is if you want it to be. Ask yourself, don't ask me, if that's what it is, that's what it will be. You may be right, you probably are. Ask yourself, I haven't got that far. Here we are again, Dickie Smothers. Another opening, another show. You and I standing out here in front of 40 million people. That's right. Uh, 20 million people, depending how good the movie is. That's right. <laughs> it's just, Sometimes it's pretty good. <laughs> it's just you and I, and so to speak, naked in front of the whole world, right on this little Tiffany every naked? week. Did you say naked? <laughs> what are you doing? You said we were naked. I'm never naked. Oh, now, first of all, it was just a matter of speech. It was a term, Tommy. Yeah. But you said you were never... What do you mean you were I'm never naked? I'm never naked. How about when you take a shower? Huh? Never. Huh? Never. I even go in the shower and I'm never naked. I always leave something... That is ridiculous. That's, that's really ridiculous. You... You... I mean, you're trying to impress people with your purity? You... You... <laughs> you are probably... Yes. You're the kind of guy that probably goes in the shower and always leaves something... That goes in the shower and leaves nothing on, just goes in there and That's to right. use that other phrase. I just go there naked. Yes, and you my 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 brother's one of those guys that my brother's one of those guys that reads medical books to get his kicks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. You used to hang around. I bet you even I bet your dog, you even let your dog run around with nothing on. Well, of course I let him run around with nothing on, I suppose. You mean to tell me you actually clothe your pets? You put clothes on your pets? Ev that's right. Except, except for my fish. 
Well, why don't you close your fist? Well, I gotta get my thrills, too. <laughs> that's sick. You know, that's really sick. It's not you know, it's not sick. necessary to cover up the human body all the time because the human body is beautiful. It's dirty, Dickie. Oh, no. It's no. not the human body's... As, it's what about the nose? The nose isn't beautiful. Yes, the nose can be beautiful. What that's about true. an elbow? An elbow can be beautiful also, Tommy. What about an armpit? <laughs> Got you on that one, didn't I? Armpits aren't too beautiful, are they, Dickie? Well, how about Rubens, Tommy? You know, he was one of the world's greatest painters, and he painted in the nude. Yeah, but what a... Yeah, then what about Whistler? Yeah. Nobody wants to... He his, didn't paint his mother in the nude. <laughs> Who wants to see a naked old lady in a rocking chair? You have a point there. Except but... maybe a naked old man. All right. <laughs> Tommy Monet and Picasso and Leonardo da Vinci, they all paint, painted in the nude. Now here, look at this picture. This is a painting and it's entitled Nude Des Descending a Staircase. Now no. look at it, tell me if you think no. this is dirty. Now, what's the matter? That's mom. <laughs> mom, why'd you do it? No, it's not. I'd have given you some money. Tommy, you didn't that... have to go doing something like that. That is not mother, that is actually a very famous painting entitled Nude Descending a Staircase. Yeah, it makes it's beautiful. Me, makes me sick. Oh. I can't look. It's disgusting. It's the dirtiest display I've ever seen on any oh. television show anywhere in the... I've never seen anything more disgusting than a nude, descending I've never seen anything out, well, outside of Rowan and Martin sometimes. <laughs> I wouldn't be caught dead looking Listen, at a dirty let picture. Me, let me tell I'm you. an American. Now, an American. Tommy, don't... shut up. Let me tell you something about art. Great painters throughout history have glorified the human body by painting nude models. They had to do something while they were staring. <laughs> oh, 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 you mean they were just trying to cover up? That's a pretty dumb joke. <laughs> if you it think is. the body's a beautiful thing, prove mm -hmm. it. If you think, it's, you think it's beautiful... I don't have to prove it. Prove it's it. obvious, Tommy. Take your clothes off. So beautiful. No, well, that Come on, let's have a little beauty around no. here. Start peeling, Dick. <laughs> Come on. Is there a painter in the house somewhere so my brother can have some fun? Now look at Tommy. You're, Come on, you're take it off, Dick. No, you're Don't be you're embarrassed. The body's a beautiful well, thing. I know you said it. You're I... about you're you're about to become a masterpiece, Dick. We'll call it Nude with a base. Now, come on. Go ahead. I get undressed. Don't have immortalize base. yourself. Dickie, no, no. go ahead. Take your clothes no. off in front no. of No. No. Why not? Because. Because why? Because it's dirty. <laughs> Ask yourself. San Francisco was responsible for a new trend in new pop music. And the Jefferson Airplane was one of the groups that made that sound popular. They really made it popular. Marty Ballin, Spencer Dryden, Jack Cassidy, Yorma Calgon, and Paul Kantner. And of course, Grace Sick. I mean, Grace Slick. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jefferson Airplane. You are. 
our kind. We cannot tolerate their obstruction. Of all the toothpastes that promise to get teeth whiter, which one gets them the whitest? Just recently, a major dental clinic tested the leading brand's promising whiteness. The clinic did the brushing. The clinic did the rating. And McLean's won. Of the leading brands that promised to get teeth whiter, McLean's got them the whitest. Shouldn't you be using the winner? I came back. I came back to brokering. I tried another hairdressing, but I didn't like the way my hair looked. So I came back to that little dab of brill cream because it leaves my hair looking natural. We all came back to brill cream. And we're glad they did. Brill cream, the best selling hairdressing in the world. The 1968 presidential election is all wrapped up. Some of you are probably kicking yourself for not voting. Well, it's all wrapped up except for one final item. See, Mr. Nixon has issued his victory statement, and George Wallace and Hubert Humphrey have conceded defeat. But even though it's been five days since the election, there's still one candidate yet to be heard from. That's right. And let's see if we can get him to come to the microphones for an official statement. Oh, uh, here he comes now, the Stag Party candidate, Patrick Layden Paulson. <laughs> I would like to thank all the people who voted for me and put us over the top. <laughs> I pledge to you that we will do our utmost in the next four years to unite this great country. As president, is my... <laughs> I would like to thank all the people who worked for me during this long and hard-fought campaign. Many people are asking how it feels to go to bed on election night thinking you have the presidency in the bag, only to awaken a few days later and... <laughs> and discover you're a loser. Well, I'll tell you quite frankly, it takes some of the edge off the morning and get your day off to a pretty bad start. <laughs> the American people have made their choice and I will abide by it. I have sent a telegram to Mr. Nixon promising support, <laughs> promising support for all programs which benefit the people of this country. He has sent a telegram back saying he will try to think of some. <laughs> well, Mr. Nixon has finally managed to win an election and I wish him well. Facing a hostile Congress and a hostile public, which gave him less than a majority of the votes, he will certainly need all the help he can get. But I'm sure he can count on the Democrats. After all, they help him win the election, so why stop now?
Although I lost, I harbor no resentment toward the voter, for in the long run, he is the real loser. <laughs> I've never lost an election before, so I really don't know what to say. But there seems to be a tradition of saying certain things, and Mr. Nixon has gracious, been gracious enough to provide me with a script from one of his previous campaigns. <laughs> so I just want to say to the press that you've had a lot of fun with me during this campaign. <laughs> I leave you, I just want you to know how much you're going to be missing. Gentlemen, this is my last press conference, and you won't have Paulson to kick around anymore. <laughs> All right, next. What? What's that? I was calling the next act. Next! What do you think this is, a bakery? Next? But Two our, more loaves, next? No, but our next our next guest has an introduction, so I just wanted to get her on as quick no, as look, possible. Look at, look, next! Look. Tommy, look, look, if you're gonna be rough and rude to our guests, then I'm not gonna let you do introductions all by yourself. I wasn't you can't treat an artist like that. You just can't come out here and holler, next! And well, like that, next, get on, do your thing. Well, I You've gotta prepare the audience. You have to know psychology, Tommy. So well, you've got to uh, work up some anticipation, a sense of anticipation. You just can't come out here and yell, next, like a cattle drive. Oh, now put some right. thought into it. I'm sorry. You could really do a good I'm job if, you, if you'd really I'm tried. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm really sorry. It's with great pride and pleasure that it's we much prepare better. you for our next artist. Yes. She was a guest on our show last year, and we're glad to have her back. We certainly she, are. She's a gracious and talented American. Her name is Kate Smith. Kate, next! Where you've gone, it fell soft. 
Bravo. I was saying, I was saying earlier, uh, before we went on the show, there is something, even though there seems to be a gener generation gap here in the country, someone like Kate Smith comes on and sings, and it's something that uh, the generation or time does not erase because songs and good singing is valid regardless of what's happening in the country, and you're beautiful. Thank you. you you're very sweet, Tom. Thank you very, very much. Last, you know, last, last time, Kate, last time we had uh, Kate on the show, uh, she taught me uh, how to sing with soul. And I, I, what, I, what song was it? Uh, you'll Never Walk Alone. You'll Never Walk Alone. And I enjoyed it so much, Tommy. Really, I did. And you know, I was just going to say, I would like very much to sing a song with you. You and I do a song together. Well, we and uh, you remember that silly little thing we were doing the other day over there with the orchestra, when we had the orchestra? Yeah. You know, it was a little rhythm tune, it was kind of cute, and we went through a little dance and all that. I think we ought to kind of try it here just for the fun of it. It's a, it, by the way, that's, this song is a Mason Williams song, too. That's he's right, on later, it is. On, later on in the show, Mason uh -huh. Williams. Oh, and he's Ann. great. He's so great. Well, he's kind of weird. No, he's not. He's terrific. Yeah, terrific. but you, you've never had to you hang around him as much as I have. You should know. <laughs> I like that. Anyhow. <laughs> Nelson, <Ready>? Nelson, hit <laughs> it. We're in trouble. <laughs> You're the lady, you're the lady that I love. I'm the lady, the lady who. You're the lady, you're the lady that I love. I'm the lady, the lady who. You're the little lady. I'm the little lady who. I love your touch. Oh, thank you so much. I love your eyes. That's very nice. I love your chin. I love your Jenny Chin Chin. You're the fella, you're the fella what rocks me. Rock fella, a rock, where were you? <laughs> you're the fella, you're the fella what rocks me. Rock a fella, a rock a fella. You're my rock a fella. I'm your rock a fella. in the right place. And I love you so fine. That's very fine. I love you, Jess. Razzmatazz. I love you, Jess. Razzmatazz. Your lady you're the lady that I love. I'm the lady, the lady who. You're the fella, you're the fella that rocks me. Rock fella, rock fella. You're my rock fella. You're my Cinderella. When a big car isn't big enough, get a small car instead. The Volkswagen Squareback Sedan. Sit tight. When a big car isn't big enough, get a small car instead. The Volkswagen Squareback Sedan. A year ago, not too many people knew who Mason Williams was. Mm -hmm. And now things have changed. 
Hmm? Nobody knows exactly what he is. That's right. <laughs> but I know, I know what he does. He Just... writes and he sings. And he composes, and he was formerly the head writer of the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. And he just received, uh, recently had a, a big hit, a smash hit, called Classical Gas. Now, Mason uh, is one of my best friends, and we used to room together. And he's not, oh, yeah? yes, don't make anything out of that. <laughs> a lot of people are talking, you know, all I'm, over the country. I just suggest you be quiet here. And he, In Orange County, they're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, don't let me bother you. I had my choice of brothers and I got him. But you lived a good, clean he life. He sings great. Right. He sings great and he's not just a guitarist. No, he's not. And here he is with his own composition, <laughs> Road Song. Ladies and gentlemen, Mason Williams. Right.
As I said before, Mason's last hit was an instrumental called Classical Gas. Now he's got another one, another hit, we hope. A classical guitar piece that's a Baroque bossa nova. Here is Mason again, Baroque Canova. Jefferson Airplane, Mason Williams, and Pat Paulson on the second half of the Smothers Comedy Brothers Hour. Decisions, decisions. Do I want good, rich flavor or one that's lower in tar than the best-selling Filter King? Wait. Now one cigarette gives you both. Pell-Mell Gold. Newest U.S. government figures show Pell-Mell Gold 100s now lower in tar than the best-selling Filter King. Longer, yet now lower in tar than the best-selling Filter King. You make out better at both ends with Big Tip Pell-Mell Gold. Tastier, milder. Pell-Mell Menthol, too. The Camp Town ladies sing this song, do da, do da. The Camp Town racetrack five miles long, oh do da day. I came down there with my hat caved in, do da, do da. I go back home with my pocket full of tin, oh do da day. Wine run all night, wine run all day. Wait a second, what, just the same. What, what language is this? What do you, you got to know Th that this, for? This right here. What do you mean? What language is this? When, what does this is day it? camp town ladies sing dis song mean? I, uh, a do da do da. I'm not I sure. mean, what does dar mean, Dicky? And well, wid and caved. And what language is this? Wine. 
Gwina run all night. I mean, what language is this? Gwina run all night. Oh, come on, Tommy. What's, oh, what's wait, the matter with oh, you? Oh, wait a minute. I got it. This is a the, folk... Gu the Gwine races, right? What? Gwines run all night. The Gwine races. Look at Dar Gwine run, Dickie. Come on, Gwine beat the wind. Run, Gwine. The Dar is catching up. Boy, what a race, Dickie. The Gwine is... Oy vey. What is the matter? The poor Gwine just do dog. <laughs> What is, what is it? Okay. What okay. is a gwine? Gwine is very obvious. Obviously, it means going. Gwine means going. Gwine, go on, you know, that kind of thing. You see, this is a, a song that was written over 100 years ago in the South. You see, South. Southern oh. part of this country. The old South, and that's the way the people used to talk. where they learn to talk like? Oh, I don't the, know. Oh, the old South. The old, old South. The great old South. You remember the old South? The great South with the plantations and steamboats. I'll never forget when I was a kid growing up on the Mississippi River. The captain would yell, Tommy Smothers, four fathom. <laughs> Instead of Mark Twain. <laughs> and I always remember playing with the neighborhood chitlins. And every Sunday morning we'd sit, we'd sit down at breakfast table with Aunt Jemima mm -hmm. and Uncle Remus, and we'd pour over ice cold milk over a great big bowl of weevils. <laughs> oh, and who can forget that Eli Whitney invented the Negro? Oh, what a wonderful thing in the South. We all are happy in the Tommy, South. Making a fool out of yourself by saying that Eli Whitney invented the Negro. I mean, that is ridiculous. Him inventing something. Just finish the song and then you go to your room. Well, you, you know, you have, no, you have no sense of humor at all. What do you mean, I have you no have, sense of humor? You have no sense of If you really think, you think that I think. I mean, where, if you think that I think Eli Whitney really invented the Negro. You mean you, you were just kidding? <laughs> of course yeah, I That's would. a funny joke. Eli, White, Eli <laughs> Whitney invented funny. the Negro. Right. I said that and you took me seriously. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin. No, I mean he freed the cotton gin. <laughs> Wait, I want to Just go... shut up. You've done enough. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to move right along to the Jefferson Airplane. Lather was 30 years old today. They took away all of his toys. His mother sent newspaper clippings to him about his old friends who stopped being boys. There was Howard C. Green, just turned 33. His leather chair waits at the bank. And Sergeant Dow Jones, 27 years old, commanding his very own tank. But Lather still finds it a thing to do, to lie about nude in the sand, drawing pictures of mountains that look like bumps, and thrashing the air with his hands. But wait, whole lather's productive, you know, he produces the finest of sound. Putting drumsticks on either side of his nose Snorting the best licks in town But that's all over Thirty years old today And lather came foam from his tongue He looked at me, eyes wide and plainly say Is it true that I'm no longer young? Mommy? And the children call him famous What the old men call insane And sometimes he's so named that he hardly Tommy. knows Back what game to play, Harry, Harry. which words to say, Amy. and 
I should have told him, no, you're not old, and I should have let him go on, smiling, baby, Ladies and gentlemen, in the spirit of all great men, Pat Possus is not bitter about losing the election and is willing to share his vast knowledge he has gathered over his first 100 days in politics. And so, ladies and gentlemen, here speaking on the status of international politics, Patrick Layton Paulson. Thank you. Our topic tonight is politics. Let's start with a simple, basic approach. In order to help us understand the politi <laughs> political situation around the world, we will use some visual aids. This. <laughs> this is a cow. <laughs> this. There's another cow. <laughs> we'll label this cow one and cow two. These are two cows. <laughs> now back to politics. Let's talk about communism. Under communism, if you had these two cows, you would milk your cows and give the milk to the government. As soon as it got sour, the government would, would sell it back to you. <laughs> so that covers communism. <laughs> now let's compare that with old New Dealism. Under old New Dealism, <laughs> if you have two cows, the government shoots one cow, you milk the other and throw part of the milk down the sink. <laughs> like a good idea at the time. But it... Let's move right along to capitalism. <laughs> Under capitalism, if you have two cows, you milk one, sell the other to make a down payment on a bull. <laughs> then you put them both in your wife's name and declare bankruptcy. <laughs> like this better than de Gaullism. Under de Gaullism, you wouldn't have any cows, just a lot of bull. <laughs> Let me illustrate this with a personal amusing anecdote that happened to me. Several weeks ago, I went into a candy store and I ordered a jawbreaker because I was thinking about... <laughs> Many ha ha's with us. <laughs> what are the jawbreakers? Because I asked the guy how much his jawbreakers were, and he said they were a penny. So I gave him a penny and took this jawbreaker home and, and put it on the shelf. About three days later, I went into this candy store and asked for a jawbreaker. I asked him how much they were, and the man said they were a penny. So I gave him a penny and took this jawbreaker home and put it on the shelf. About two days ago, I went in and I said, How much are your jawbreakers? The man said they're a penny. So I gave him a penny and I took this jawbreaker home and put it on the shelf. Now I went in today. <laughs> I said, how much are your jawbreakers? And he said they were a penny. So I gave him a penny and I took this jawbreaker home and I put it on the shelf. So. <laughs> I don't tell jokes as a rule. <laughs> Of 
Personally, I feel that all this talk about cows is for the birds. <laughs> and the world has already gone to the dogs. So next week, if you get a chance, take a cow to lunch. <laughs> Now, listen. I am an acne blemish, as lonely as can be. Don't Ain't cry, blemish. I'll keep you company. Say, fellow blemishes, would three be a crowd? All together, blemishes, sing real loud. Want to turn them off? Get Theroblem, the skin-toned acne medicine that covers up as it helps clear up acne blemishes. Theroblem by Noxzema, the blemish silencer. Hi, I'm Bart Starr, and I take it off with Noxzema, medicated shave. Men, take it off. Take it all off with Noxzema. Men, if Bart Starr takes it off with Noxzema, shouldn't you? After all, he's a fantastic first baseman. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour takes a look at freedom. All the world over, it's so easy to see. People everywhere just want to be free. So listen, please, listen, that's the way it should be. Peace in the valley, people gotta be free. Wouldn't it be great to be really free? You know, free as a bird. Maybe not. You should see what a lovely, lovely world it could be if everyone learned to live together. Well, did you free the slaves? Free the slave? Well, Mr. President, I, I made a stupid mistake. I thought you said breed the slave. Honey, do you know a seven letter word that means the United States? America. Do you know another seven-letter word that means difference of opinion? Dissent. Thanks, dear. Oh, here's another seven-letter word. I want to know what it means. Who, it's uh, one who loves his country. Patriot. <laughs> oh, why didn't I think of that? Uh, one more, that is another seven-letter word. It, uh, I want this one. An objection made to an official of the government. Protest. Thanks, dear. You always are such a big help. You're going to hate me, but there's just one more. That is another seven-letter word. I want one that means all those things that you said. Freedom. Mm-hmm. Well, what's a seven-letter word that means freedom? I don't know. Divorce you. <laughs> Ask me my opinion. My opinion will be it's a natural situation for a man to be free. All the world over, it's so easy to see People everywhere just want to be free Pardon me, sir. Yeah? We just walked into a restaurant down the street, and the owner threw us out because we had beards and long hair. Now, according to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, that's illegal. Well, you're out of luck, fellas. You see, that law only applies to Negroes. <laughs> There is a man who is down and needs a helping hand. All it takes is you to understand and to pull him through. Free again, lucky me 
I'm free again. <laughs> I'm free. Mrs. Smith, $485. As free as the wind blows. This is Davies, very good news for you. It's not as much as we expected. It's only $14,432. Seems to me we gotta solve it individually. And I will do unto you what you do to me. Czechoslovakia is free country. You can do anything so long you have permit. You mean I, I can go to a public place and speak at my mind? Of course, so long you have permit. I, I can publish dissenting views in newspapers? As long as there is permit, you can say anything. I can lawfully assemble and take part in demonstrations. With a permit of God. Oh, now I can breathe. Do you have a permit for that? <laughs> say, hey, you out there. Come on in. Come on in, my good man. Come right in, please, and be our guest. Come over here and sit down. We want to entertain you today. This is our day to do the entertaining. Now, you just pull up your chair, make yourself comfortable, and we are going to give you a wonderful lunch. We're going to give you pea soup, and we're going to give you a nice, thick, juicy steak smothered in onions, and guess what for dessert? Apple pie a la mode. How does that sound? It's all free? Absolutely free, every bit of it. I'll take it. Good. Harry! Thank you. Thank you. Now, how's that? Now, you just go right ahead and make yourself comfortable and enjoy it. That's what we want you to do. Now, that's everything that would be good for a man your size and age. Are you enjoying it, sir? The finest food I've ever tasted. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. How do you feel? I feel wonderful. You do? Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, folks. It's safe to eat. <laughs> Excedrin is made stronger against pain and its tension than any other leading headache tablet. 
Excedrin headache number 412. You've papered the powder room. I sure did, honey. Before you put any more glue on it, let me see what you've honey. done. You've got the fish swimming upside down. Well, you've got them crashing into one another. Well, they do another. crash into one another, they and they swim crash. upside down. Look at the fish tank. That Tell fish me. has been dead for three days. You've glued It'll the come guest out. towels it's water. together. It's water That's soluble marvelous. glue. Look, I saved us $350. I, you, I don't know what you're complaining about. You haven't saved me from an Excedrin headache. Take some Excedrin. It's in the medicine cabinet. Garth? What? Where's the medicine cabinet? For Excedrin headaches, get Excedrin relief. Excedrin is made stronger against pain and its tension than any other leading headache tablet. I don't need Van Rolon deodorant. I'm an aristocrat. <laughs> you do have a certain air about you. <laughs> <laughs> We would like to thank our guests right now for the wonderful job they did tonight. Miss Kate Smith, Jefferson Airplane, Mason Williams, and Pat Paulson. Let's give right. them a big hand. <laughs> our guests, our guests next week will be Donovan, Jennifer Warren, Jennifer. Dion, Dion, and the committee. So please come back and listen to us next week too. So good night. Good night. Jefferson Art by Frank McKay. Film sequence for Road Song, edited by Gene Ringelay. Also appearing on tonight's show are Carl Gottlieb and Paul Wade. This is Roger Carroll. Impossible. Read the latest government figures. Try Silver Pins. Now in Menthol, too.